I'm Ange. And I'm Steph. We're Nerdazons. So this month was my choice. It wasn't the original choice I had chosen, but due to COVID, the Secret Garden remake wasn't released in Australia and we don't feel comfortable going to the movies and we don't feel comfortable asking you to go to the movies at this current stage. So I chose two films that are easily accessible to stream or you could even potentially have the originals on DVD or VHS or however you watch them. But we are doing The Fly, 1958 to 1986. And again, great choice. Yes. Absolutely great choice because I remember growing up and I remember seeing the original one, uh, sorry, the um, 1986 one, watching it going, yeah, it's all right, but... Actually, you know, it started my crush on Jeff Goldblum. Uh, yeah. And then never knowing that it was a remake, going back and watching the remake was awesome. Yeah, like I actually had only seen bits and pieces of the 86 one mm-hmm. as a kid mm-hmm. um, and I'd never watched the original and I thought, you know what, they're two films that I should probably know and have watched, so mm-hmm. I'm going to watch them. But also, again, as to the omen, these are movies, the 86 one especially, is movies that are a must see for yeah. any film goer. Yeah, like I feel I try to make things, pick things that, you know, if you're a real film enthusiast, you should know a lot of these films. Mm-hmm. And like half the time I know them through references, but I don't know them as movies so I try mm-hmm. to choose them so that way I can add that to my bucket list of exactly things that I've seen mm-hmm. so I will read the synopsis for this one the fly 1958 a scientist has a horrific accident when he tries to use his newly invented teleportation device mm-hmm. now this film I'm just going to start with the intro and I loved it, and mm-hmm. especially because a lot of classic films did intros. Sometimes they were way too long, but this one I thought was good. It was mm-hmm. just enough, and it had a fly buzzing around with, like, red lines cutting through, and I, I just thought it was such a cool intro. It really set the atmosphere for the viewer at home that you're about to get. It's, like, ominous and creepy, and, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that was a bonus point for me. The The Fly is a fantastic and thrilling movie. I know that the ending sequence of Help Me, Help Me was cheesy and over the top to some, but to me it was just plain creepy. It really scared me, to the whole atmosphere of the film just left me uncomfortable and disturbed. Granted, I know these were not top of the line makeup effects with the fly. Granted, I know these were not top of the line makeup effects with the fly. I do have to laugh just with the little bit seeing a fly in a trench coat, but but still it was effective and made for great sci-fi story. Yeah, like um, what I liked about this is they didn't show you the fly until the very last Mm -hmm. like three or four minutes of the film. So the whole film was you need to find the fly, you need to destroy the fly, find the fly, find the fly. So Mm -hmm. you didn't know what it looked like. It was just it had a white head and a funny leg. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it was really, really – when I saw it at the end, I was just like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Like Mm -hmm. the exact opposite to what he looked like, which was pretty cool. Um, And I think – even just to that final scene, I think it's you, you do need to appreciate that for 1958, they were able to, it was probably all props, they were able to zoom in a giant version mm-hmm. of a little spider web with just like half a spider's face mm-hmm. coming in, a fake fly body, and he would have just been there. He, he would have probably been standing there actually with mm-hmm. his one arm out and his head. And that's pretty amazing to see what they were able to do at that time my mind is actually blowing right now because now I know this I because recently seeing the movie for the podcast I'm just thinking back to the Simpsons yeah where he's like nobody suspects the butterfly and that's like from the from this yeah and, and the machines like, are actually me, from me. that like the um I was actually watching it the other night with my partner after I finished the film and yeah, the machines that Homer buys for two dollars from Professor yeah. Frink are yeah. the um, teleport. Well, he calls it the disintegrator and reintegrate the yeah. integrator, and that's what he buys. But the Simpsons got it closer. The way Bart, you know how it's got 
the like sp- uh, the fly's head. Yeah, they he looks closer to the original than what he did the Jeff Goldblum yeah. one. But the the teleporter machine looks closer to the Jeff Goldblum one mm-hmm. than it did the original. So. Yeah, just, yeah. The, the Simpsons are just amazing. That's yeah. all. They are. They they have like I think they've almost got a reference in every film we've ever done. Yeah, we should have tracked it. Dang it. Damn, why did we think of this? Why did we not think of this? I liked how this film jumped around with mm-hmm. scenes, and mm-hmm. I don't think there were too many classic films. They would have started from the beginning, middle, and end, whereas this one, you saw the death straight away, and then it they go into, like, the cops and everyone talk to her, and she won't say anything, but when she finally lets up, then the majority of the film is about her and her husband and the the scientific breakthrough he had, but then the problem he had Mm -hmm. and then her having to desperately try and find this fly and then having to sadly kill her husband. Mm -hmm. And then the end, the last five minutes, is them finally finding the fly. And I just thought it was really cool that you don't see too many films like that of a retail account. Mm -hmm. And it was just it was was different and I liked it. It was a bit slow paced for me yes which i get bored easily with movies and i think due to the age of it i was a little bit bored and and until you saw the teleporters and things like that then it started to get interesting for me yeah it what i 100 percent agree it is slow and until you can see the mistake or like the whole why won't he talk? Why is he just like mm-hmm. knocking and, and mm-hmm. things like that? Until that starts to happen, it doesn't pique your curiosity as mm-hmm. to, oh my God, what happened? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it definitely was slow at first. But I feel like this one has a lot more heart to it than the yeah, remake. so cute. And when he, or when he wrote on the blackboard, I love you, I had tears. Like I that know, was so and beautiful. Wrote, like, and I, I really, really like the actor. So David Hedison played Andre, and I feel he really, really did amazing with his body acting mm-hmm. because when, as he was writing that, you can see just in the scribbled I love you, that was the last bit of humanity he had left, mm-hmm. and that was for his wife, and it was just so cute. Also, another thing of that was when he was wearing the, the, the fly mask and the prosthetic, I really liked the fact that he, even though he didn't have any lines and you couldn't see his face, he still showed the emotions that he was turning into fly when he was moving his neck like when he was turning yeah, into the yeah, fly yeah. and moving his head around like a fly would. And that was really cool because I was like, oh, my God, he's, he's actually turning into a fly. The, the original one, he's got the prosthetic head on and you see when he's uncovered for the start and you're like... Rrr, rrr, rrr. like Even the eyes on the prosthetics looked really good. Oh, close yeah. To a fly. Hence why I still have my fear of bugs. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I, I just think they did... He, he was amazing mm-hmm. at that. Mm-hmm. So I had a question that I did pose to myself Mm -hmm. when I was watching this. If your husband asked you to be a part of his experiment, this was before I I watched her full replay of account Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. recount of the events. Mm -hmm. If he asked you to be a part of an experiment and it resulted in his death, which at that time would have been capital punishment, so she would have hung, Mm -hmm. wouldn't you just say I pushed the button because... And mind you, it was still a slightly male-dominant society at that time. My husband asked me to instead of, I killed him. Yeah. Like, she could have... She could have helped herself in a way to say, I can't tell you, but I didn't out... Like, I I didn't murder him. him. No. Like, it wasn't murder. It was like this. So, yeah, I just remember posing that question to myself. She could have maybe worded that a bit different, but I know vocabulary was very different in the Mm -hmm. 50s compared to how we would talk now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The one negative point I will say about this film is it doesn't age well. No. Great, great film. But, you know, you've got a nine-year-old boy drinking. It looked to us like cordial, but they put wine in the bottom of a glass and they filled it up with water and he was drinking that with dinner. I think there was at one point he said something it was a very very slight sexist remark and i'm like oh god nine-year-old boy's making that comment he was talking to the baboon no 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 it was um he was at the dinner table and he said something about mum did that and it, it was like oh all women do something and mm-hmm. yeah so there were just a few a few elements that didn't age mm-hmm. with it the foundations of this film are still great yes absolutely. and i feel that that outweighs like for a film buff i think you would sit and mm-hmm. watch this 
mm-hmm. even if some elements didn't age well. Of course, right? of course. And and I mean, obviously, society's come a lot. <laughs> oh, sorry. Obviously, society's come a long way from what it was. Yeah, I, I, I. This movie was very, very different. Also, poor Dandelo. And when you like, so the cat is the oh, first experiment, it. and he puts they like and. It's odd because the whole way through, they're like, none of them would ever hurt an animal or a fly even. And and then he looks at Dandelo and it's like, I'm going to put you through my machine. And you just hear random meowing in the, the air somewhere. <laughs> and it's like, that's horrible. I would hate that. Why didn't, like, if that was me, I would probably try and find a bug somewhere outside and do it with a bug. As opposed to a bigger house pet that is for your child <laughs> and kill it. But yeah, yeah, poor Dandelo. I like the kid was still a bit creepy to me as well. I just, I just kids back in the fifties or whatever just creeped me out. Oh, I just thought he was a bit of a sook. Every time she told him to do something, he would sulk away like. Nuh, nuh. I just, you yeah, know, just like... don't. The, just kids back in the olden days just freak me oh, out. I don't think it was freaky. <laughs> he was fine. I think Vincent Price in this movie, he was, he had a very calming effect mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when he talked. His, uh, the tone of his voice mm-hmm. was really sort of soothing and. Mm-hmm. I think it would be good if you were sort of hysterical and to hear that you'd feel good. I don't think there was any need or it was done well. This is another thing I don't think Mm -hmm. was done well to add the whole love interest part. Mm -hmm. So when the police officer says, and it's just randomly out of the blue, like throughout the beginning, he really does seem like a concerned Mm -hmm. brother. His brother had just died. He's like, oh my God, why would she do this? You know, we're, we're all very close and things like that. And then it's like, you're in love with her. Yes, I am. And that was it. It's like, but why did you need to introduce that element? You didn't explore it. You, it didn't show in any other acting throughout the film, except that he tried to help her, but it just didn't read that way. And I feel they didn't need to add it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, I I don't mind a bit of romance here and there, but if it's not needed... And if you're building up the beautiful marriage that they have between each other, why add that, like, two sentences? Exactly, because you could could tell that they genuinely loved loved each each other. other. There was so much heart between them. Yeah, you could definitely see that they loved each other. Even the love in Vincent Price and what fueled his actions to me looked like he cared more about his nephew to make sure he had a mother mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i can see he was fighting hard to ensure that his nephews um still had his mum around yeah and i didn't see it as i've always loved this woman sort of type mm-hmm, person mm-hmm. you know and no just, that's right you're just a brother-in-law that just cares about yeah, their family and i just feel like it didn't need it yeah they, they were my only two points i i feel that did bring the, the film mm-hmm, down mm-hmm, a little bit mm-hmm. Um, I have a really good fun fact, though, about Ooh, this. Oh, yes, please. I love fun facts. So it, a lot of people swear that they saw this film in black and white, but they never did. This is sometimes referred to as the Mandela effect, which is simply a false memory. It's extremely common. The fly was only ever filmed and shown in color. However, the sequels, Return mm-hmm. of the Fly and The Curse of the Fly, are black and white. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Yep, because yeah. I was watching that going, hold on, wasn't this movie black and white when I first watched it? And then I was reading and I was, uh, and they were like, oh, it's the return of the fly and the fly too that's actually black and white. Yeah. Because the franchise was doing so well that they thought, oh, yeah, we'll do another one the following year. Yeah. And most people, when you talk about the fly, they, they are talking about the black and white 1957 version, which is the, the one that came up. Uh, no, a year after before. This was yeah. 58. Yeah. Oh, 59 version yeah. then. Yeah. Sorry, the, the 59 version that came out a year after this one. That's cool. I think it's really cool because, you know, if you try and think back to it and you just, your mind is telling you what's wrong, even though you actually watched it and you know it's in color. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that's really cool. That's a really cool little fact. Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> One other really cool thing that um, I would like to mention is just before we started recording, we watched a cinema trailer. Me and Steph watched a cinema trailer that was released for this film and it was really, really cool. It had a little bit of the fly in the intro theme of the red uh, trail that comes across mm-hmm, the screen mm-hmm. and then you see Andre with his trench coat and the thing over his head and you see her scream 
and then it stops and Vincent Price comes out. It kind of reminds me of the Simpsons Treehouse mm-hmm. of Horror when Marge always comes out and she's mm-hmm. like, I urge you not to watch this. But it was really cool because he'll come out and then he's like, I think for you, you need to watch this first for yourself to truly see the horror underneath that mask. And I just thought that was a really good way to do a tra- like a trailer. You're, you're enticing people to see, oh my God, what is under that mask? Yeah. I need to see this. And this one had a bit of a like Hitchcocky feel to it. It I was agree. just really creepy. I really actually enjoyed this one, even though it did take a while for me to get into yes. it. Once I did get into it, I was like, oh, yeah, classic movie. Like, just like the original Psycho, you know, I was like, oh, am I going to enjoy it? But I thoroughly enjoyed yeah, that one. I, I loved The Omen. I liked this one. I, like, I do like like classic movies. Mm-hmm. It's funny, me and my partner were talking with some of his family about some classic films, and every time a legitimate blockbuster classic film is mentioned, they're like, oh, it's boring, it's boring. And, I'm, and we like, were just like, but that's amazing. And like, mm-hmm. it was like they were talking about The Wizard of Oz and then The Sound of Music, and I, I'm like, how – Do you not appreciate them? Because I guess people are more inclined to new movies where the special effects are great and it's not really about the storyline. I think that plays a big part Mm -hmm. of it. Like, Mm -hmm. I had, as you know, I'm the youngest out of Mm -hmm. quite a few brothers and sisters, and we Mm -hmm. had hand me down VHS. So, Mm -hmm. when all my friends were watching all these new Disney cartoons and stuff, I had to watch all the old movies. So, to me, I think I just liked and appreciated them more and if you're not watching like daytime tv and things like that then you're not exposing yourself to the classic films to fully appreciate them and quite often the storylines are really really good yes that that's what i was going to get at is that the new sorry the older movies it's all about the storyline and it's all about how the sound makes you feel versus how Hollywood has pretty much dumbed down most movies and it's all about explosions, all about... Yeah. Oh, uh, they, even... they take it to the next, like, they feel they have to go to the nth degree, you know? Sometimes simple is good. Yeah. And it's and... the same with horror movies. Like, yeah. Even I'm not quite into a lot of the new ones because I feel they go too far in, like, horrible gore and stuff. And Yeah, I'm not into gore porn Yeah, and it's just like you movies. don't need to go to that extent when you can achieve it with this. Well, that's right. And and I, like, speaking of horror movies and things, I only ever watched the first Saw and I was completely turned off and I, I don't get the point of those movies. I don't, even though people are like, but minus all the gore and everything, the storyline is a great storyline about this guy who's sick and blah, blah, blah. Mm. But, yeah, I just... I just it's just not, not into my cup of tea. I'm the nah. same. I I like a lot Thrillers of you know sixties to eight, eight. Well, I can now say nineties because mm-hmm. they're different to what we have now. But I like a lot of those horror. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite genres is B grade horror. I love mm-hmm. really tacky horror films that mm-hmm. didn't have good budget and they're just so bad. They're mm-hmm. so funny. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, this does it. I also just found mm-hmm. while we were chatting a really cool fun fact about the very last scene mm-hmm. with the fly so mm-hmm. i'm gonna read it sorry i know if i sound funny while i'm reading but i'm just gonna read it so in the scene where the fly with andre del delambre's head and arm is caught in the spider's web mm-hmm. a small animatronic figure with a moving head and arms was used in the spider web as a preference for actors vincent price and herbert marshall price later remembered that filming the scene required multiple takes because each time he and marshall looked at the animatronic figure with its human head and insect body they would burst out laughing so we were wrong i thought it was an actual wow yeah that's so really cool. a little animatronic how funny is that's that that's really cool that's pretty cool i do like that how many movie reels out of five would you give this one I'm going to give this one a four. I'm going to give this one a 3.7. I'm going to give this one a four for the fact that it was the first time that I saw it and I was was entertained. entertained and that I was like shocked because I hadn't seen the, uh, the remake in such a long time that I actually, all I remembered was Jeff Goblin turning into a grotesque yes. fly. But I forgot about what the storyline was about. I, I, li- I liked the how there was heart in it Mm. and how 
you know, it tugged at my emotional heartstrings. Just a really good, the only way I'm not giving it a five is because it just took a while for me to get into. Yeah. But yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. So so what were you going to give it, sorry? So I'm going to give it a 3.7, mm-hmm. not quite four as much as I'd like to. But I do feel, like you said, it was slow at first to drag the viewer in. Mm-hmm. It was dated in some areas. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't age well in the fact that look how like the technology, you know, when they had to put the black mask over their eyes. Oh, and I think the, the like that was that was kind of cool. The but... science scene was fine. Yeah, but fine, I'll change it. Okay, you'll have to cut a lot out. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Okay, I, I've conceded, and I'm going to change to four star. Mm-hmm. Um, for pretty much the same reasons as you. It didn't age well and it did drag at the beginning, but it was so entertaining. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I hadn't seen this one either and I was gripped. I loved it. I enjoyed it. Would you watch it again? I think I would. Okay. Yeah, I think I yeah. would. Would you? Absolutely. Yeah, I thought it was it was good. It was good enough to definitely watch again. So, I, yeah, I think four movie reels is good for this one. I do also think it deserves the four stars because it was good in my opinion, Mm -hmm. really good with the way they did the story by making a retail of accounts. Mm -hmm. And I just think that was really good for that time. I don't think you would have seen many films like that in 1958. No. I I think it deserves the four stars for that. Yeah, that's a really cool point because you don't see movies where it's, I mean, now you might, but back then you're right. You don't see movies where they die. You already know how it ends. Yeah. But it's how they get there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I really like that. Um, what do you think this one got on Rotten Tomatoes? I'm going to go 93%. Very close. Higher or lower? Higher. 95%. Yep. No. 95%. Yes. A second try. But <laughs> I was like, it's definitely a classic. It's up there. Uh, I'm going to guess. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. I got it right the second time. Yep, you do. Yes. Um, I think it deserves the 95%. Absolutely. So let's move on to the remake. So yes. So I will bring up the synopsis. Oh, I'm so excited. The Fly, 1986. A brilliant but eccentric scientist begins to transform into a giant man slash fly hybrid after one of his experiments goes horribly wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've got something. I've got a lot to say. But okay, you okay. go. Because I, I watched this one first. Oh, right. I see. Um, no, so yes, sorry. I was thinking about yes, I did. <laughs> so if I didn't know what this movie was about, I would have been so confused in the beginning because it delves straight into it. You're just like, huh? Why is he? But also, there is only three main characters in this movie. Yeah, yeah. And yes, and, ju- one's, and a few side characters in the bar. Yeah, yeah. But this one, I have to say, I know you're all gonna hate me on this. However. There was no chemistry between Jean da- Jean Davis, Gina Davis, Gina Davis. But those Gina two Black. have done about fifteen films together. Have they? Oh, they've done so many. They did Transylvania six five thousand. Oh. They did Earth Girls Are Easy, which is oh where my god, my Earth crush, Girls Are Easy. Yeah, my crush of Jeff Goldblum started. Like they've done quite a lot of films together. Those two. I agree, though. I like. I feel like at the start, Gina Davis. I liked her about this. Mm-hmm. She wasn't, she was, you know, a modern woman. She was a journalist. Yeah. She didn't have to smile because someone told her to smile, no. you know. So it was her attitude and how she wanted it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then I feel, I feel you do see a little bit of her when she starts to turn for him. Mm-hmm. But then at the end, it's like full blown emotion and it's just like, so much is going on. Where was all this emotion like mm-hmm. moments ago, you know? Mm-hmm. But exactly. she was, still did it. Her crying and everything on cue is amazing. Mm-hmm. So, But also going back to when I was saying earlier about I don't like gore, I don't – but this, like this is what I like about movies is the 80s where you know fine. that it's – you it's know latex that it's and pus. That's I can deal with that. Even from the beginning, I obviously was going to like this movie except watching it again, like I said, I was super confused but then I was – because I just didn't know where she was and how they met up. Like it just. Oh no, they showed. So at the very beginning, you may have missed it. It was only mm. seconds. So if you had mm-hmm. it on the background, you probably would have missed it. So mm-hmm. they, she was at a site, like some scientist convention. She mm-hmm. was there as a journalist to try and get yep. a story. And he was, he obviously was attracted to her. Yep. 
and then he, he something about her made him decide to want to show her. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's when she went back to the yeah. place and then she recorded it and he's yeah. like, no, you can't use no, this. You... And she's like, I'm a, I'm a journalist. I can do I'm what I want. It. And she yeah. stormed out. And then that's when their paths cross. And yeah. he says, look, I will give you the story. Once I'm done with yeah, it. And yeah, and you can record it from there. Yeah. So that's how that started. And where she's like, oh, you can have my stocking. I was like, yeah, I know. That, why that? I mean, obviously, <laughs> why that? Yeah. Ob- there were obvious reasons. Like, I just think this one didn't have as much heart as the original. I didn't feel for the characters as much. The only thing that got me was sexy Jeff Goldblum mm. and <laughs> also the effects at the end. When Jeff's face is starting to turn and he's in the bar and he's trying to pick women up, yeah. they're like, yes, yes, I'll come with you. But can you not see that his face know, is starting to like... diseased. Like he, he looked like a leper. Yeah, he did. He looked really bad. So one thing I don't know if you noticed this and I noticed in mm-hmm. the opening credits, but did you see the director was David Cronenberg? Who's that? I mean, he's a director, but do you recognize the surname? Mm. Oh, my God. The Cronenbergs. I'm pretty sure he was the inspiration for the Cronenberg species in Rick and Morty. No. Because I think a lot of his films is he does a lot of, like, mutant-looking mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And then that's where the, you know, when he, it was yes. the, the place where they all turned bad. And he yes. To, yes, yes, yes. I'm pretty sure he was. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that was what I got when... I saw the name and I thought, I'm pretty sure this is... Because it's not a very common name. It's not a common name at all. No. I've put down... One of my notes was, um, it is it is pretty grotty. Like, it's gross. And there is a lot of sex and zero chemistry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so much. Like, they... That was... Oh, that's what I was going to say. In the original, you've built the entire one hour and something film mm-hmm. of... All different characters Mm -hmm. talking about the love that these two people had Mm -hmm. for one another and how solid their marriage was. And then you have about a two-minute montage of them shopping and happy and he gets her the necklace, Mm -hmm. which she always wears. But that two-minute montage wasn't enough to show the love that they had and Mm -hmm. how quickly he turned on her too, you know. But if you watch the original or later in the film, he actually says they're harsh Mm -hmm. towards other like flies and stuff oh no that's exactly what i was gonna say so they've got a note here when when he's turning into the fly and he's like all i wanted to be is a political insect all i want to do is be an insect and she's like i don't understand what you're trying to tell me he's like all i want to do is become an insect Insect. like no shit sherlock (laughs) like i thought that was the funniest thing me and mads are just cracking up laughing going she he wants to be an insect yes and I just actually find that very hypocritical that he says in the fly species, mm-hmm. they are very solo in the sense that they don't care mm-hmm. and they will do what they need to do for themselves. Yeah. And he's like, if you like, I'm not going to have any affection for you. But then moments later, as soon as, and he's further gone by this yeah. point. So his mind is yeah. further deteriorated. Yeah. He's so quick to jump in and be like, don't kill my kid. Oh, okay. But. You know, you just said that you have no emotion towards me. So it did jump a little bit there, I think. Yes, absolutely. And Okay, well, another point I had, <laughs> and this is how I wrote it. Um, <laughs> as I write it as I watch it. So yeah. pardon my tiny little note point, but it says, yeah. I'd be scared for my life if he took me to his place and said, I can't let you leave. Yeah. And that's what happened in the very beginning. He's like, yeah. I can't let you leave. You've seen this. And it's and she's and even then she's like, I haven't seen anything. What your little egg pod? Like Yeah. But I'd be and his place it was an abandoned like factory. And he, yep. had, he lived in like a rent. I would be so scared. I would not have gone back. Uber, come get me now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or GPS on, but like they didn't have that back no, then. No, I didn't. So. Let we need to get to the effects. How but before we do, just one last point yeah, on absolutely. Gina Davis. She always plays that bubbly character and it was nice to see her not in a yep. bubbly. But the effects, when he pulled his fingernails off and then he squirted <clears throat> the stuff on the mirror, I just, I was in my room, it was dark and I was watching it off my laptop and my partner was playing PlayStation and I'm like, ew, and he's <laughs> like, what? And I'm like, he's just 
It's squeezing pus all over the mirror. Yeah. Like so, but it looked awesome. I love that. Yeah. That to me is what I like to see. And when he's got the editor, or sorry, the ex boyfriend, and he just. He's like. Bleh. Bleh. And then, then you watch arm. it melt. Like, I, that's. 80s films are so good. And then you just see it's clearly so fake of a hand. And yeah. It's like or plastic. even the leg. You can yeah. see that it's a fake leg. Yeah. Because I think he's slightly misaligned to it. But yeah. it, it just looks so cool to watch the middle of the leg melt in. I know. And that's what. That's and you what, see the bone. I'm like, oh, I can't be scared because clearly it's fake. Yeah. You know, that's what I love about these. Oh, I just love it because it looks cool. And yeah. And to me, when I see that, it's like someone had the fun to make this. Yeah. And make. It and look these like teeth that. coming out. Oh, I was just like, no, no, that's what. But so he gross. had that fly twitch. Really he did. Good. He, he did that well. And then the yes. with his mouth, and it was just like, Ew. and when he's putting in like the sixteen sugars in his cup of tea, yeah. all I could think of was sugar. Give me a sugar for a. It just um, reminded me immediately of um, Men in Black. Not with. Oh, the, I remember that. Yeah, but no, it was just like, remind, give yeah, me just, sugar. It immediately reminded me of the original because she nearly caught it and by putting sugar all over mm-hmm. the table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so funny. I loved it. Yeah, but absolutely. Even when he came out at the very end and he was infused with the door. Yep. That looked awesome. Yep. That looked like a Cronenberg. That was just <laughs> creepy as any. Like it was not creepy as anything. It was just grotesque, and that's what I liked about it is that it was. It, it was there to give you jump scares and to gross you out. Yeah, they did change the science behind it so it became more of genetic splicing as yeah. opposed to – because the fly completely gone. The, the fly had fused and mm-hmm. spliced with his DNA. Yeah. Whereas in the original, it was just a nice simple swap of two body parts on each of them Yeah. and you got to kill both. Mm-hmm. Whereas this one – You've just got to kill him. Because I was thinking about that when she's pregnant. I'm like, Wait. oh my god, that dream, that would scare the crap out. I would want, oh, like, oh. I would, I would be in the exact same spot as her if I had a dream with that little weird worm thing. Oh out. yeah, like, kill it now. Oh, abort mission. Yeah. <laughs> I would be in the same boat as her. No, when because I was thinking when she was pregnant. Because it happened, like, now there's an adult, would his DNA have changed to make so the baby like that? So I thought of this too, and I yeah. sat there thinking, was this post-genetic uh, splicing yeah. or um, pre-genetic splicing? So they did it, obviously, pre-splice, but then there was the day, like, just after he spliced, they, she said it was, like, yeah. four hours. Yeah. And I would suggest or put my money on it that that was the day that it had happened. Yeah. So it means his DNA had already changed. Yeah. But I, to me, and I was saying that to my partner, I'm like, I feel if you couldn't be 100% certain, you would just have to get, get, get rid of it. Get rid of it because yep. it's the only way you can know. And what, what would you do? Like, how could you raise a child knowing that you're half fly yeah. or you're one third fly? Like, yeah. it would just be too difficult. But also, I felt so bad for the baboon. I know. Oh, you look on your face is so I sad know. right now. Oh. <laughs> And they like, I hate seeing animal cruelty. Even with like Dantelo, as soon as he put Dantelo in, I wanted to cry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing so hard. Like, it looked like you had tears in your eyes just then, and I've got tears in my eyes from laughter from the look on your face. <laughs> it is horrible. Yeah, I know, you just see a mess. I know, or like you just see the slam of the like but then- blood on it. You know, the fact that he puts another baboon, his brother, in there, and He's then they're fine. fine, and then he runs up, gives him a big hug. Yeah, it was so cute. I was like, oh. I know, it's super cute. But then, but then I, I killed your brother. I, like, I know, why would you tell him? Thank you for him? your brother's sacrifice. Yeah. So one big difference between this one, apart from obviously the, the experiment itself is slightly different, uh, uh, the storyline of mm-hmm. the original was focused around the wife and what the wife had to do, whereas yes. this one, it's focused around him and how he is slowly changing into a fly. Yes. So it follows his transition across, um, I think flies were like, from what they said in the original, it was like a month. Yeah. They had months. So you're following him over a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I just liked... I think they were both done well. Like, I think each mm-hmm. movie strong point was uh, the, the original worked by following her, but then this one also works by following him and his slow changes mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. a fly. Mm-hmm. 
and I just thought it was cool. Yeah, once once I got over the fact that there, there was no chemistry between them and I was just, I just switched my brain off, went, you know what, I'm just going to enjoy this. And did I ever. I enjoyed this so much. Yeah, it rekindled my love for Jeff Goldblum. But see, I also think Gina Davis is gorgeous and she looked so good Not in, in this movie. I, I didn't like did. her that much at all. I liked her in it. You probably didn't like her personality in this. Yeah, she was just very bland and... I liked eh. her in it. Her hair was awesome. Yeah. You can't get away with hair like that now. I know. <laughs> so it's funny because I wasn't... When I was watching it, it was late at night um, and I wasn't expecting... I should have expected... Uh, like the past and the prosthetics and which I all horror like my favorite horror series mm-hmm. is Nightmare on Elm Street and they did all the similar mm-hmm, sort mm-hmm, of stuff mm-hmm. um, but I wasn't expecting it and the first part that you do actually see so before all the pus and the fingernails is when he arm wrestles and the guy's mm-hmm. arm bone pops out yes. and I just went Ugh! <laughs> yes. my lungs like what is that I, I wasn't forgot about it. that yeah. even though I watched it last night I still can't <laughs> yeah I know I, I, just, you, I wasn't expecting it I was no. expecting because you're watching and I was expecting to hear the bam yeah. when he like slams like, him I win yeah. yeah but then the arm popped out and I was just like what and then he like grabs her by the arm and he's like let's go I would not leave with him I win <laughs> I get to take her home for dinner I get to take her home yeah. for the night if I win Excuse me? Yeah. She's not yeah. a piece of meat. Yeah. She can do what she wants. That's the feminist in she me right went. now. She did go. You dumb girl, you dumb. I know. If I saw someone break a guy's arm like Does that. Does that mean she's probably pregnant with the fly's baby? Oh, Sequel. maybe. There are sequels. I know. So. Maybe. Maybe it's the, maybe. Maybe it's the red dog girl. One thing too, which is really uh, interesting mm-hmm. in character development wise, is the editor. So when mm-hmm. you first see him... He seems all, you know, professional and smart. But then as you see when he's in her apartment and all this, the rude and crude mm-hmm. comments he makes to her, mm-hmm. he's a bit of a, a douche. And then later to see that he would support her through, you know, when mm-hmm. she's like freaking out and she's like, I can't, I, I need, you know, I've got this child in me that I can't have. Yeah. You know, and Take he actually doctor. supported her to it. He yeah. took her there in the middle of the night, you know, and he went into the apartment to save her. He could have just been a scaredy cat and run when she got locked in that thing. But, you mm-hmm. know, he still tried to help her. Yeah. And it just shows you that he really did truly love her, yeah. even though he would make really horrible mo- remarks oh. sometimes. But again, nine, uh, I was going to say 50s and then I went 80s. Yeah. That's how people were. What do you give this one out of movie reels? I'm gonna I'm gonna give this one four as well for the pure fact that it was enjoyment. Uh, it was nostalgic. It it was amazing. Also, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, I'd probably maybe give it a four point two, just a mm-hmm. little bit better than the fifty eight. Mm-hmm. And it is purely on it's our type of love for the the well eighties gore. Yeah. I say with yeah. quotation marks. Yeah. Um and it's just I just enjoy seeing those things and I think that did really well. Um and it seems like when the fly was like when he was dying at the end, that kind of gave me like a Stranger Things feel to like a demi gorgon when it was like exploding. exploding. And I was like it kind of oh, reminded me it was like me. the fly coming out of his it was like shedding his skin. Yeah. Like the actual fly leg came out of his hand and stuff yeah yeah Mm. it did look really cool I did I did and so I'd probably give it just that little bit more because of that Mm -hmm. but But no they're both both very I would watch it again however I'd need time to watch like I wouldn't watch it again next day like I do some movies oh yeah yeah definitely Definitely I think it might be a yearly watch um how many uh how much percent it is a classic and I heard that you know some people think this one's better. Some people think that the original's better. I think they're both very close. They are, aren't they? I'm going to give this one. And the way that we voted, I think they're very close for us even. I'm going to give this 96%. No, it actually got 92. Oh, that was my first choice when I said originally 92. So um, they're only 3% different. So it even, and they're both in the 90s. So it shows you just how good both films are. Absolutely. They're both on par. Finally, we haven't done a bad. All right. So any last uh, comments, anything you might've forgotten? No, I just think um, this is one that I would suggest to watch both because Mm -hmm. they're both good in their own way. um, And each storyline benefits the time 
for its own. Fun thing. fact, do you know how this story actually came about? It was actually a little tiny article in a Playboy magazine. Like Somebody the 86 version? No, no, no. The original story of the actual fly was a little short story in a um, Playboy. A yeah, That's in so in a cool. play in a Playboy magazine, and then they were like, "Hold up, this sounds like a really good idea." And then someone took that, and then somebody took that it. idea. That's awesome. Yeah. So, all right, let's move on to my favorite part: Nerdazons, Nerdy Notables. I have a Halloween tradition that, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do it this year because you of watch COVID. Focus? No, oh, I do. Rocky Horror, and we go and we oh, go to the cinema right. in the city, and we do the movie where we we take. We take newspapers with us and rice and, and, and we do the whole monologue where it talks, where they talk to you and you talk back to them. There's a whole script that you, like a, uh, that you can read when you do it. So I got, I did that just via, me and my friends just did that via, um, via Skype. We just put the movie on and we, cool. we did that as well. That. Yeah, yeah. Also, have I you I usually watch seen... Hocus Pocus. I got you? that on DVD somewhere. Have you seen the... I know it's a bit, bit late, but have you seen the Batman trailer? I have. And it it's going to be bad, but I don't think it's going to be, like, Justice League bad, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I think he's going to try, and it seems like he's trying to it's be... It's like you've got a really good in-between from Gotham series to the movies, so you've got that in-between, yeah. like, you know, he's an adult now, he's no longer... Mm -hmm. you know a, a child so mm -hmm. I, I think it might be okay but I think but he's I, just tested positive for COVID Robert Pattinson yeah oh my gosh yeah I know that's scary it is scary we do only have two or three sessions left for our D, &D game and then we move on to the next one <gasps> which is uh Rise of Tiamat yep so hopefully you don't die yeah um, and that I feel like you're on a vendetta. <laughs> I was talking to one of the other players, and she's like, "Um, sorry, we're so bad." I'm like, "No, you guys just don't talk to everyone." She's like, "It's not." She goes like, "No, we really don't. We always kill and then possibly ask questions <laughs> yeah. later." I'm like, "Yeah, that's that's absolutely right." No, I think and then there's only two members of our party that are really good at improvisation. Um, is one of them me? Mm, you're you're pretty good at it too Thanks. but I think you need it's a talent you need and this is our first game yeah and so if you're not comfortable or if you can't fully immerse yourself into the game it can be difficult to improvise mm -hmm. which is why our first thought is always we should attack because it's easier to steal from a dead body than it is to no talk. but also you know I've played games where people are more into not fighting to talking to the community to mm. doing the problem solving and then i've been into parties in in campaigns where the party are just about killing people yeah and like as soon as something happens like three members of this party just want to immediately like loot i know and you're like no 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 <laughs> calm down let's do this let's do this and i'm like yes yes she's on the right path yes and then you i'll do something and then you're like say are you sure Yep. So, so it makes me think. Um, and then we have one player that just uses um, Ray of Frost and, and fails. And every literally time. fails. The only time. Every time. He literally wa rolls a one or two. Yeah, I don't think he's rolled times anything better. He wins is usually like when there is no battle engaged and it's we're at the pub and he rolls to try and see if he can steal stuff. And he does. He does. However, to roll and. It's like he has no other no other skill other I, than Ray of Frost. I don't and then, think he does. <laughs> and then I I was playing one of the bad guys and I'm like, oh, I'm going to do Ray of Frost. So it was literally us and we were both rolling really bad. Really bad. We were like, roll a Frost one. Roll a Frost one. <laughs> yeah. And like, I feel I would love to redo my character because it's a very mm -hmm. strong character mm -hmm. and I don't have any other benefits. So to me, the only way I can do anything is by fighting. Mm -hmm. So uh, in future, if I play another game, I would try and create a character that had, you know, either magic use mm -hmm. or something like that. One of my favorite characters was Harana Laka Tarana from Mountain of Druid. Um, she was, yeah, me. she was just the biggest bogan. But the other one I had was, was it Chester the Mester? And he was a half orc bard mm -hmm. who played the triangle. 
Wow. And so, yeah. And then he would always sing. Uh, it would go ding. When I get that feeling, I get sexual power. And oh then he gives goodness. everybody inspiration. He sings that song. And just these big, tall. Oh, that's tall... cool. One of our members who has inspiration should yeah. try and do something like that. Yeah. So whenever um, anything happened, his big, just half awkward would come up and just pull out a triangle. Ding. Ding. When I get that feeling. That's cool. Yeah, I think maybe in our next, uh, if we ever do continue playing, we would try it and do it a bit better. But for yeah. a start, we, we only think, you know, it's a quest. Yeah, that's right. But I'm like, I'm really glad you guys are having fun with it and enjoying it. Yeah, we are having fun. Um, okay, so next month is the, the final last one for the year. For the year. It's crazy. This year has gone quick, but it's only because I think we've all been inside. Yeah. <laughs> for yeah. most of it. Since I think I've literally watched all of Netflix. Yeah. We'll have to start recording our stuff for uh, ours is the last one for the uh for two thousand and twenty. Uh we are, we are doing, doing Death on the Nile. Which I'm so excited about. The trailer for that it one looks, looks so really good. really good, but we're doing so the classic movie versus... We're doing the movie yeah. versus the yeah. book of the, the two movies. However, yeah. Ange, like you said, you've I've listened, already listened, to, listened to it. I'm I'm going to reread it again as well, so I'll have back knowledge. Yep. So whether or not you've watched the the, the original movie, that's fine, because we're going to compare it, the movie to the to book the, to the remake. Yeah. yeah. Also, we've got good news coming up uh, for the... For the new year as well, uh, we are going to be publishing fortnightly. It's our Christmas present to you. We are going to actually do a brand new twist on it because every year we like to do something different. Yes. So what we have is we have a list mm-hmm. of everything we want to do. Everything that we can think of. If you have any other ideas, please email them, them at we'll notes at outlook.com. So what we're doing is we are going to be doing fortnightly. We are going to be putting our list into a generator and we are going to generate um, our ideas that way. So that way we don't know what we're doing. Uh, we will probably know previous episode what we're doing. Yep. Uh, but this, so that way we can give more content to you guys because we've had emails saying that there's bit. not enough yeah. episodes yeah. out and to mix it up a bit more with genre wise. So that way it could be something that we've both seen. It could be something that we've both never seen. It could be, I think there's Western movies on there. There's um, anything we think of, we just anything, keep adding to yeah. this list. So it's probably like three years worth of movies, episodes yeah. and stuff for us to do off this list. It may be difficult for those like myself who are slow at reading. If a book comes up, we might try and push that to like the tail end of the month mm-hmm. just to give everyone time to read it. Or I will most likely listen to it as best I can. Um, but we definitely want to try and push more content. Out we are too. going at the end of the second episode. We are going to tell you what we're doing for that following month as yes. well. So that way you, you know what you are getting ahead of you yourself. Um, some of the movies that are on our list are... I'm really keen for Girl Interrupted, the book versus oh, the movie. I really like the movie. But I do remember when I watched the film, I think I was a bit young and the uh themes in it were probably mm-hmm. not appropriate mm-hmm. for me so it would be good to go back and actually probably mm-hmm. study it and uh the other one that i'm actually really keen on is one of my all-time favorite movies true lies which i yeah. didn't realize is actually a remake i didn't know that was either it's actually a remake from a so um one of my other ones that i'm really excited about is the is true lies which is one of my all-time all-time favorite movies um which is actually a remake which from I no neither did i it's actually a from a french film la oh. totale from 1991 Ooh. Oh, that'll be interesting and I do hope we do get to venture out into a lot more world movies as well yes yeah. because we all know that they're, they're my favorite genre mm. and things like yeah. that so so um, if you do like what you hear please uh, like and subscribe on Spotify Apple podcasts iHeartRadio, wherever you get your good podcasts from and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And remember to send us an email at nerdazons at outlook.com. Until then. Bye. Bye. Bye.